In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural car paint material. And this car paint material works really well in both the Cycles and the EV render engines. So here it is in the Cycles render engine, and here it is in the EV render engine. So I think it looks really good in both Cycles and EV. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, and that's a really great way to help support this YouTube channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. Or if you'd like to learn how to create more of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. And then one more thing before we get started, I wanted to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. On Sketchfab's 3D model store, you can purchase models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3D models in your browser. You can even view your 3D models on a phone or tablet. You can also apply to become a seller on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. So real quick, I'm just going to show you what I have here in the 3D space. So what I did is I just added an icosphere and I just subdivided it and then shaded it smooth. And then also I have this BMW car model that I created a little while ago and I will be putting the car paint on this. Now to get very realistic lighting with some nice reflections, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDR and this is from polyhaven.com. So I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to download it. And what I really like about this HDRI is that it has all these cool lights right here um, and it looks really good for reflections on a car. And then also I wanted to add some more of those reflections. So what I did is I just added in um, these two planes right here and I just gave them an emission material and that way they're going to add some more cool reflections on the car paint. And then just like all of my procedural material tutorials, I will be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that turned on, you can just click on edit and go to the user preferences. And then right over here under add-ons, you can search for Node and then just turn on this Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'm just going to select this object and I'm going to click on new and then I can just call this procedural car paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag the metallic value all the way up to one. So it's a metallic material. And then I'm going to change the base color to kind of like a blue color. Um, we'll be changing the colors later on, but for now I'll turn it to a blue color. And then I want to turn this clear coat right here all the way up to one. And that's going to add a shiny clear coat over this material. And then you can change the clear coat roughness, but I think the default at 0 0.03 looks pretty good. So just by changing those few settings, this already looks like a really cool car paint material, but I want to give it a subtle texture so that the car paint looks slightly glittery or flaky. So to do this, I'll press Shift A and I'm going to search for the Voronoi texture and drop it down here. And then using the feature from the Node Wrangler, I can press Control T with that selected and it's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't need the mapping, so I'll click on it and press X to delete it. And I want to plug the object up to the vector. Now to use the other Node Wrangler feature, I can hold down the control and shift key and click on different nodes and that is going to preview the node. So I can control shift and click twice and that's going to go down to the color value and you can see that we have this cool texture right here. Now I'm going to turn the scale up to an 800 so that it's very very small. Now this scale value will depend on the size of your object so you might need to change the scale value so it looks good on your object but for me 800 works really well. So now what I want to do is I want to take the color and put that into the roughness and then I can control shift and click on this. So now what I want to do is I want to control that roughness because if I zoom in here, you can see it's kind of looking cool, but it is a little bit too strong. Some parts of the material are like super shiny and then some parts aren't very shiny. So I want to control that a little bit better. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and drop it down here. Now, if you like how this looks, you could leave it, but I think there's too much contrast between rough and shiny. So I'm going to take the white tab and I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And then I'm going to take the black tab and I'm going to turn that up by quite a bit. And for the tab on the left here, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then you can click over on the hex value and you can type in A6, A6, A6. And then over here on the right side, if you'd like to use the same color that I'm using, uh, right over here on the color, you can click on the hex and you can type in CB, CB, CB. So the difference between these two colors is very subtle. So the roughness value isn't going to change by very much, but if you kind of give it some more samples and wait for it to load up, you can really 
really start to see that texture there. And if you switch over to the EV render engine, I do think these colors look really nice. But you could make this more contrasty if you wanted to um, by clicking on this left tab and then you can drag this down and make it darker. But I don't really like the look of that because it looks a bit too contrasty and too shiny. All right, and that is pretty much it for the procedural car paint. But there is one more thing I wanna show you. I wanna show you how to create a custom node with different colors. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A and I'm gonna search for an RGB. So this is basically just a color value. And then what I can do is I can drag this up here and I'm gonna duplicate this by pressing Shift D and I'm gonna make a few different colors. So what you can do right over here is you can change it to the color that looks good and then you can add it to these colors. So I'm first gonna take this blue one and click and drag and drop the color right here. And then I'm going to change this to like an orangey color, just change it to an orangey color that looks good. Um, and then once you've gotten it to the color that you like, you can again click and drag and drop the color right there. And then I'm gonna do that a few more times. So I'm gonna add a green one. And I think the green car paint looks better if it's a bit darker. So something like that. So I'll drop that right there. And then I also wanna do a red one and I'll make that very bright. So that looks pretty good. I'll drop that there. And then for this last one, I'm just gonna make it kind of a gray color so that it's sort of a silvery paint color. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to box select these colors. And then I'm going to press Control G. And Control G is going to create a node group. So if I tab back into object mode, you can see now we have this custom node group but you can see that this doesn't have any outputs so I'm going to tab into edit mode and you can see that there's a group output and a group input so what I want to do is I just want to take all of these colors and I want to plug them all up to this group output so now if you tab back into object mode you can see that we have all of these custom colors and you can just plug these up and this makes it really quick to change the color of the car paint because you've already created these really nice color presets that you like now, I don't really like the names right here, so I wanna change the names. So I'm gonna press tab, then I'm gonna press the N key, and N is going to bring up the side panel right here. So now right here under group, you can see that we have these different outputs. And so if I just double click on this, I can rename it. So I'm just gonna rename this to blue, and I'll just continue to do that for all of the colors. And the last one, I'm gonna call this one silver. Now I also wanna create a custom color right down here, so you can change it to any custom color. So to do this, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and then I'm gonna take this group input node and I'm going to drag it right down here and then right over here under the outputs I'm going to click on this plus button to add a new one and I can rename this to custom so I can now take this group input and I'm going to plug that into the custom value so if I now press tab to go back into the original node setup you can see that we have this custom one right here and I can just plug it up and then I can change this color and it's going to change the custom color and then to rename this node out here in the main setup I'm going to press n and then right over here under the label I can just call this paint color all right there we go so now we have these custom colors so you can change the custom color to any color that you want or you can just plug up your presets and there we have it so there is the procedural car paint material so I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching